Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today we got some pretty big news. Um, we're having another mid-expansion, pretty large, I would say, update to the game. And this one is going to be focused on basically what Blizzard thinks the class identities are and some kind of justification for uh, taking out some more cards from the standard set, hall of faming them, I guess, and putting in some replacements, but not just the replacements for those, a whole bunch of replacements that they have missed from cards of hall of famed in the past. So uh, there's a pretty lengthy blog post. I'll include a link for you guys below and, um, um, in this one, they go over what they think the class identities, I guess, should be, because a lot of people pointed out a lot of inconsistencies with what Blizzard thinks the class identity should be and what it does right now. And one of the funniest ones is apparently Shaman is supposed to have one of its weaknesses being draw and card generation, while right now Shaman actually has like the most card generation and it's not even remotely close to any other class. You know, you're talking about Hagatha and the Murloc bro that creates more Murloc bros whenever you play a Murloc bro. Murlocs, bro, a lot of them, right? So obviously what they're talking about, I think, is more like their long-term plans, how they envision these classes working out in general. And I think it's important to know that um, the way that Hearthstone is structured is class cards are really powerful and neutral cards are generally a little bit less powerful. So it's not like these classes don't have access to all the tools they would need potentially. Like, okay, one of Rogue's weaknesses is board clears, but you can always put like a board clearing neutral neutral card in your deck. It's just, it's gonna be lower power level than like a flame strike, for example. That's kind of my thinking. Anyway, so two cards, Hall of Faming. You probably read it in the title. We're losing Vanish and Mind Blast. Because Vanish is a rogue card that removes stuff from the board and rogue is supposed to not do that very well. And Mind Blast is um, supposed to do damage to your opponent's face and according to Blizzard, that's not supposed to happen with Priest. But then, like, I don't know about that. You know, I've played World of Warcraft for several years. In fact, some of the first few YouTube videos on this channel are my World of Warcraft videos from my time raiding and Exodus. And oh man, those were good times. Now, in those times, a lot of people played something called Shadow Priests. Basically, you'd play a priest, which is normally a healer, and one of the builds was Shadow Priest. And you'd go like Shadow Form, and then you'd do damage, and then not heal. So Mind Blast was actually a skill for the Shadow Priest, and basically, it just did damage. Basically, exactly like the card. So. It's kind of weird to me as, you know, a lifelong fan of the Warcraft genre, all the different RTS games and World of Warcraft. And I see Shadow Priests in World of Warcraft and Blizzard says that it's not really a priesty thing. Fine, let's see what Blizzard has in store for us. Um, and I guess for standard, it's not going to be mind blasting. So that's kind of a heavy hit to Priest. Priest is not doing particular particularly well right now and one of the decks that actually does do okay is a spell damage mind blasting priest. Now it was announced a few days I think maybe a week ago that Blizzard will be filling in the spots for the uh, cards that have been hall of famed in the past um, and I didn't even bother mentioning this because the last time they filled those gaps it was like mage spell one mana create a random mage spell in your hand. It's like those are like non-cards. Those are cards that didn't really do anything. They were just not cards, basically. So I wasn't at all excited about that announcement. I didn't even mention it anywhere. I didn't even tweet about it. But uh, today we got these uh, Hall of Fame replacement cards. They're actually pretty cool. So let's talk about those. Um, first of all, the two replacing just the recently Hall of Fame cards, replacing Vanish and Mind Blast. We're going to have a four cost three, three card for Rogue that gives something poisonous. Now, this card is pretty weak power level in general. But again, it's in the base set. Everyone gets this card for free. But you have to keep in mind, it can be comboed with other cards that have other effects. You can combo this with like a Pyromancer or the Rocket Launcher, whatever dude mech thing. There's a lot of cool combos that you could do that actually clears the board when you play Rogue. Hmm, how about that? Um, we also get Radiance, which is a Priest card, which is basically totally useless. Uh, Radiance is uh, horrible. Uh, Radiance might be played if you're doing like a Wild Lyra deck and you're generating spells and you're like, ooh, a one cost spell. I can play this, do something kind of, and then get something else because this sucks. And that's basically the only uh, use I have for Radiance. So Radiance is a pretty big disappointment, but the rogue card actually is pretty cool. Now they have a bunch of filler cards for cards of 
Hall of Fame in the past. They're going to start with uh, Warlock. This is a new demon. Uh, it's a seven cost, five, eight taunt, and your other demons have plus one attack. Now, this is not a particularly strong card, but it is not bad. You have to keep in mind that uh, in terms of the arena power rankings, a card like Bog Creeper is actually extremely powerful. Bog Creeper is a seven cost, six, eight taunt. So if you have one demon on the board, this is a pretty similar power level to a pretty powerful card. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to see playing constructed. In constructed, you typically want higher power level cards, but there are some minion generation abilities. Sometimes you do play arena, and also there are like on-board demon generation abilities like Bane of Doom. Bane of Doom is actually pretty crappy because most demons are small, but with this card being in the classic set now, basically it's in all formats everywhere in Hearthstone, it's going to be a pretty big buff to Bane of Doom. Now, are people going to play that? No, probably not. But uh, the, this card's existence will have some significance in some games, which is okay. I'm pretty cool with that. New Druid card, 8 cost Gift of the Wild. Not much of a gift for 8 plus 2 plus 2 and taunt to all of your minions. Uh, typically, the minion buffs for Druid are good because they're early enough, so you Zerg it up and then buff them, or they kill your opponent. But if you kill your opponent, you only care about the attack. So would you play 8 mana to get 2 attack, or would you play 3 mana to Savage Roar? Well, you'd probably play 3 mana to Savage Roar. So this card is pretty damn weak, but uh, it's possible that in a very niche uh, gameplay environment, something like this could see play. If there are tools given to the Druid class in the upcoming expansions that allow them to survive until late game and still, without losing and dropping all of your hand in the late game, you still have some ways to push out on the board, putting a bunch of taunts, I don't know. It's super fringe, I think it'll suck, but who knows. And we have a new pally card, five cost. Give all your dudes divine shield for five. Oh, that's a deal breaker. Uh, this card's effect, I think, is pretty strong. Uh, like if it was like a three mana card, I think people would actually consider playing it. If it was like four mana, maybe, but probably not. But it's five mana. I don't think anyone is sold on this card. It's a pretty powerful card. It's just, it's too situational for it to cost five mana. You can't float a card like this. It's just not powerful enough for its mana. But I think in Arena, it's certainly going to catch people by surprise. So I'm pretty thankful it exists, at least in that regard. We have two new legendaries. These legendaries are going to be replacing what was once Sylvanas and Ragnaros. Now, it's not quite Sylvanas and Ragnaros, but these cards are pretty cool nevertheless. We have Brightwing, which is a 3 cost 3-2 three, dragon, and uh, it adds a random legendary to your hand when you play him. Now, you might think this is pretty bad, and I would say it's not too bad. Um, the way we have to think about it is, historically, there's been a lot of, if you're holding a dragon, do this mechanic. But the main problem with those is not that those abilities are weak. It's that there's not that many super good dragons that you can play at any given time. This is a pretty good dragon you can play at any time because it's in the classic set now. So uh, Brightwing, I think, is going to see play. I don't think there's any kind of dragon holding mechanics that are worth playing right now, but I think it's going to come up in the future and we're going to see a bit of this little guy. I also think his power level is pretty reasonable. So, you know, if you get it in Arena or if you just want to meme it up a little bit, putting a Brightwing in your deck is kind of like spicing it up a little bit at not too big of a cost. Uh, we do have a minion here, though, but uh, this one is a bit of a big of a cost. It's a 7 cost 6-8. So the stats are pretty fair. The battle cry basically revives all the stuff you just lost. That's really good, actually. That's, like, really, really good. Um, so the main problem is it's a late-game card, and it basically is useful when both players have fairly large boards. You trade your stuff into your opponent's board, and then you revive it. So for that to happen, it's pretty situational, but that effect is ridiculously powerful. I think if the game allows you to play something like this, if it's common that on turn 7 at any point in the game, uh, or the standard format, let's say, you're likely to have a full board versus a full board and do some trading, this card is going to be a consideration for play, and that's pretty cool. We have a few more cards here. Uh, Baron Stable Hand, 7 cost, 4-4, four, four, summon a random beast. Um, now, that could be really good because you might get, like, King Crush, but you probably won't. You'll probably get an Angry Chicken. Um, well, definitely you'll get an Angry Chicken, and I'll get an Angry Chicken, but, you know. Um, power level-wise, it's pretty fair, but you wouldn't really want a dice roll on a 7 cost guy, so it's not really going to be played at all. The SI7 Infiltrator, however, 
probably will be played. It's uh, actually an anti-secret card that's pretty fairly statted. This is a first, guys. It's a four cost, five four, that destroys a random enemy secret. If at any time, secrets are actually powerful in the meta, I predict this card will come in and see some play. We've never seen anti-secret cards that actually have okay stats. Lastly, Arcane Devourer is an 8 cost 5-5, five, five. it's an elemental, it doesn't matter too much, and when you cast a spell you get plus 2, plus 2. This card should shine if you have some kind of like miracle deck, so when you play it maybe you can actually play like a 0 cost spell and like a 1 cost spell, and that's like an 8 cost 9-9, nine, nine. that's a massive threat for the next turn. I can kind of see it, it's just, it's pretty difficult to pull those decks off, but who knows what the future lies for us. We're going to have much more expansions, Hearthstone's 3 a year, and the next one is what, like a month and some away? So yeah, we'll see. It's going to be a time to revisit these cards when we start hearing about those expansions, and uh, I have a feeling we'll see more of these than you might think. Let me know what you think, however, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.